Good morning. It's your boy, and I'm back with another video, man. And if you're here for the first time, listen, man, I already know why you're here. You're tired of releasing on your keyboards, your laptops, and your desktops, and you're tired of being manipulated and dominated by female culture. You are in the right place, man. If you want the free ebook, all you got to do is follow the instructions in the comments. Email me keyboards, laptops, and desktops in the subject line, and I will email you the book. You can also give a donation. The cash app is in the comments. You do not have to give a penny towards this book. I will send it to you for free because I want you to be free. Yo, this, this video is about being despised. When you start practicing semen retention, when you start basically living a life for God and you begin to clean your life up sexually and you begin to get rid of the filth, you will begin to encounter spiritual battles that you weren't encountering before. And the reason you weren't encountering these spiritual battles is because the devil already had you under his thumb. He already had you bound. He already had you captive in his cell, in his chambers, in his dungeon, because you were living a life of filth. You were offering up your seed as sacrifices to Satan. You were giving pieces of your virtues away, your destiny away. He had no worries because you gave it up freely. It wasn't until you began to realize that the life you were living was not holy and acceptable to God. It's only until you began to be illuminated to the fact that sexual immorality is disgusting. It's vile. It's blasphemy. It's degrading. And when that spiritual battle, when that transformation metamorphosis began to happen, you alerted the kingdom of darkness. It's like an alarm went off. And now that you're trying, pressing on the right path, it seems as if everyone is against you. But really what it is, is it's demonic forces through your co-workers, demonic forces um, working through your family, demonic forces working through your friends and associates stirring up all this controversy in order to get you to fall back into the same type of lifestyle you've been freed from or you're trying to be free from. It's spiritual warfare. The Bible says that the battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, in high places. Everyone's turning their back on you. Spiritual warfare. See, you begin to experience spiritual warfare when there is a disturbance spiritually. When you were desecrating keyboards, laptops and desktops, you didn't have any quarrels. You didn't have any big spiritual warfare battles. You were left alone. Why? Because you were blindly walking into your own grave. You were doing it all on your own. You didn't. You were on autopilot for wickedness. You were on autopilot. See, once you get on autopilot, you don't even know you're destroying yourself. You can't even see you're blinded so much by your habits. You're blinded so much by your wickedness. You're blinded so much by sin that you don't even know you're walking straight into the pit. But once God called you, the Bible says, and here's the here's the thing that you got to realize. Is that if you're watching this video, if you're in tune with this channel, if you're seeking God, if you're. Um, turning away from sin, you've been called by God. That's a beautiful situation. The reason it's beautiful is because the Bible says in John 6 and 44 that no man can come to him unless the spirit draws. The spirit of God has drawn you to himself. The spirit is revealing the son to you, the Christ Jesus, he's revealing 
him to you. And as a result of Jesus being revealed to you, you're having that same experience that Isaiah had in Isaiah chapter six, when he saw the Lord in the temple and the train of his robe filled the temple. And when Isaiah saw the Lord sitting on the throne, he said to himself, I am a man of unclean lips. See, this is what happens when you experience the Christ, when you've been regenerated, you realize who you are, what you've done. And then you begin to work on shedding those evil habits, those sinful behaviors. And when you do that, you're going to be despised. You're going to be hated. Why? Because now you've initiated a war. A war has begun. That's where your flesh begins to war with your spirit. They're no longer in unison. When your flesh and your spirit were in unison, you had a gravy, you had it easy. But the moment you rebelled against the system, the moment you started seeing that you're living in a sinful matrix, that's when the agents, shout out to one of my favorite movies, The Matrix, begin to attack you. When the demons begin to attack you, how do, we, how do they attack? They attack you through people. That's what spiritual warfare is. People out there want to kill you, bro. There's people in your circle who want you dead. The Bible says in Micah chapter seven, verse five, it says, do not trust your neighbor. It says, do not put any confidence in a friend. And it says, even the woman who lies in your embrace, guard your lips this is the woman. This is your woman. This is your wife. It says, guard your lips. Guarding your lips is the beginning, not the beginning, but it is a form of wisdom. Why? Because the information that you give about your plans, the information that you give about your goals, this information will be taken and attacked. Samson didn't guard his lips. The woman lying in his embrace, he spilt the beans and he got his eyes gouged out by the Philistines. You are despised. The people you think love you, they don't really love you, bro. You have to become comfortable with being despised because it's not going to change. You are hated. Jesus says, woe to you who have all these friends and all these people like you. Woe unto you. That's not your life anymore, bro. You had to cut some people off. You had to leave some relationships behind. And you're, you, you feel like you're walking this walk alone, just like Elijah. But God had to show him. I, he had 7,000 other men, people who did not bow their knee to Baal. God will put people in your life that you can build with. He will put people in your life that you can war with. But you can't be uncomfortable being despised. If they hate you, it's for a good reason. Don't let it get you down. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself. It is an honor to suffer for the sake of Christ. They don't like you, bro. They never will. They really want you to expire. People will go as far as to go to a voodoo priest, go to a Sangoma, go to a natural healer in order to cast spells on you, in order to injure you, to destroy your destiny, to steal from you. You have to be comfortable with being despised. God is with you, bro. He is with you, right? When you begin to retain your seed, you're no longer watching pornography. You're no longer fornicating, uh, sleeping with women, um, getting drunk in bars. When you're no longer living that dirty lifestyle, a war will begin and people will begin to hate you. But what you got to realize is you have to look past the flesh and know that this is a spiritual thing. 
There's demons working through these people at your job. There's demons working through your family, your friends, people trying to get information from you. All of this is to dis- destroy and to stop your progress. That's why you have to be in a secret place. That's why you have to establish a prayer altar. And that's why you have to be consistent with going to that prayer altar, because the more consistent you are with going to that prayer altar, the more you're going to be able to hear from God, the more you're going to be able to get that intel to see what the plans of the enemy are for your life. And you're going to be able to derail those plans um, by simply shutting them down in the spirit as soon as you wake up. I hope you guys got value out of this video. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, man. Don't feel sorry for yourself because your enemies have risen up against you. One of my favorite passages in scripture is Psalms 27. And it says, the Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When evil men assail against me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries, my foes. It is they who stumble and fall. Be encouraged, brothers. Until next time, I love you.